loves. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick croissant recipe. Okay, a lot of times, you know, croissants are very fussy, it's very time consuming. So I wanted to find a quicker way where I could come close to the authentic, authentic croissant, but in a shorter time. Okay, um, so I said, you know what, I think I'll share this recipe with y'all. You know, um, I try to make it easy where you could do these croissants in under five hours. Okay, because usually croissants take a couple of days to do and that will deter people from even trying to make croissants and I get it but let's get to this recipe so guys I have some all-purpose flour here all right some just good old purpose flour I have some warm milk room temperature you know um, some sugar we have some butter that I cubed. This is salted butter, which I cubed. I have an egg yolk, okay? I have some salt, all right? And I have this starter here. It's a sponge starter that I made. I'm gonna show you how to make it really quick, okay? Um, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, and that is from with the yeast and the flour and all that stuff. So I just put the yeast next to it so you can know that, of course, you need yeast to make these croissants. So we're going to get started on this, all right? Um, just follow me. I think, I think, I'm pretty, I'm very confident that this could be something here. All right, so my loves, I am taking some warm water. Okay, I'm making my um, sponge starter now. And I'm taking equal parts flour. And we're going to add some instant yeast. Instant yeast because it'll work quicker. Okay. And I'm going to let this um, sponge starter ferment for about at least a minimum of 30 minutes. But you, if you want to do this, you could do it the night before and leave it out. And the next morning you wake up, it's all ready for you. Okay. So just stir it. And after you finish stirring it well, you're going to cover it with some plastic wrap. Okay. And this sponge starter is good for anything like any types of breads, um, 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 brioches, you know, um, so it's a good way because it gives the um, bread um, better flavor, and not only that, but it kickstarts the whole fermenting process, okay, so we're going to do this here, 30 minutes minimum, and we're going to get started. All right, so my loves, in my stand mixer, I'm gonna combine my dry ingredients, which is my flour, my sugar, and my salt. I would show you guys how to do this by hand. Can you do it by hand? Yes, but I'm not trying to do that today. A girl has carpal tunnel, so it's a little bit much on her wrist, okay? So um, even though I'm rolling, but the kneading by hand will be a little much for me. So guys, we're gonna mix our dry ingredients together. And guys, don't worry, because the ingredients are listed in the description box below. So we're mixing our dry ingredients together. Okay, and now my loves, we are going to take our warm milk, okay? We don't want it hot, we want it just warm, like as if you were feeding a baby. You're gonna take our egg yolk, and this is our fermented sponge starter, okay? You see, it's already bubbling, ready to go into action and kickstart and just get to work. So we're going to put that in there as well. And we are going to mix this, my loves, for a few minutes. You don't want to over mix this because you don't want to overwork the gluten. You want to develop gluten, but you don't want to overwork this. You don't want to over knead this because then it's going to be, we don't want the dough to be resistant and we don't want a heavy dough, okay? And we're going to mix this until the sides, the dough is um, separated from the sides, but it still has some sticking at the bottom, but it's not sticking on the sides. So that's about what, five, five minutes, maybe seven, okay? But the key is not to overwork it. So you see where we got it? Just like that. And guys, everything with your butter should be cold. 
Okay, your butter's gonna be cold. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of that cute butter. I mean, I could have just did it by hand, but I just, you know, I would, um, well, I just put it in the mixer anyway, just to get mixed in there. Now, we're not trying to get it so incorporated as if we're making a brioche, okay? But at low speed, I was just adding my cube butter in there just to get it in the dough, but not so much incorporated because we're not making a brioche, okay? Um, so this method here, guys, I'm using a combination of as if I was making quick puff pastry, and I do have a recipe on quick puff pastry. So I adapted this method as well, um, or rough puff pastry, but um, I adapted the method um, that quick lam. It's like like a quicker laminating method. Um, Will you get some rise as far as flakiness and stuff like that? But this is not the authentic way of truly, truly making a croissant. But let me tell you, it comes close. It does come close. All right, so I took a board. And um, what I'm going to do right now, my love, I'm just getting this butter. Because, see, we don't want the butter to melt in here. And I was realizing that when I was doing this, because we had it on the um, hook, the hook is creating some heat in there as well. So you don't want to do that. So we're gonna take that and I'm gonna shape it into like a rectangle the best I can. And I'm gonna put this in my, um, I put I actually popped it in the freezer for at least 30 minutes, okay? Um, because it'll work quicker, it'll chill faster, and we want that butter to set, okay? But the thing is, you don't want the butter rock hard. You want the butter to still be pliable, just like the dough. Because if the butter is rock hard and the dough is pliable, the butter is going to break through the dough. And you're going to have a little difficulty rolling it out. But we're going to pop this in our freezer for 30 minutes and we'll take it out. Now I'm going to take a little bit of flour, my loves, and I am going to put it on my board. And I am going to start rolling this out and I'm going to roll this out as you can see the chunks of butter I'm going to roll this out for about 18 inches long 10 inches wide I was eyeing it okay now the first roll will be a little you know a little difficult and if you have to add a little bit more flour do so I did try to minimize the amount of flour I was using because I don't want too much flour to get into my dough Okay, and move that dough a little bit, you know, move it around, you know, flip it over, you know, so it won't get stuck to the board as much. That's why I was trying to use as minimum amount of flour as possible. So we're rolling it out and we want to make it even. Okay, we're trying to get the layers as even as we can. Okay, about 18 inches long, 10 inches wide. Okay, and we're going to do a, a minimum of, well, we're going to do f um, uh, approximately four rolls, okay, because we're doing a lamination. The way I'm doing the lamination is like a book, but a double book fold, I would call it that, um, but you're going to see how I'm going to do it because um, the thing is you don't want to overfold it because you don't want the layers to be so, so thin that they get blended in with the flour, Okay, and as you can see, I'm using my cake scraper here to um, separate it from the board. So now I'm taking one half of the dough, my loves, and folding it over. And the other half, I folded it in the middle. The other half is folded in the middle. And we're going to, that's number one, and we're going to fold that. But you're going to work quickly, okay? And I'm going to give it a second roll because the butter is still cool the dough is still cool so it allows me the amount of time to give it a second roll and while we're doing this my loves what's happening is that the butter is being um uh um, sh um how to flattened in between the layers we don't want the butter so soft whereas it melts into the dough because then you're going to have like a brioche texture and we don't want that Okay, but we want to make the um, the butter thin 
in between the layers of dough. So we're going to roll that again for another 18 inches long, 10 inches wide. I'm just eyeing it. You know, when you've been doing this for quite a while, especially lamb, this is what you call, you, you know, there's different doughs out here, but this is like somewhat of like a laminating process when you're making puff pastry, the authentic way where you have the barrage and the, the trump. The trump is like the dough itself and the barrage is the butter block. Um, so they both use these methods. All right, so I'm going to fold one side into the middle and the other side is going to be placed, folded down the middle as well. And we're going to fold the dough again like that. And we have this nice book. I'm going to wrap it and stick it right back in my freezer for another 30 minutes. The total is four. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So this is number two. See how I'm so nice? I just had to write it down. So, because it could get a little confused, especially if you've never done this. Okay. All right. So this is, um, now we're rolling it out again. And this is going to be the third roll. Okay, and who doesn't want a nice, tasty, buttery croissant, you know? But again, I understand the intimidation. I, I understand the stress and the fussiness of doing this because nobody wants to go through that. It's too much. So guys, we're taking half of the dough that we rolled out, folding in the middle, and the other half, we're gonna fold it in the middle, and then we're going to fold it again. We're going to stick that bad boy. That was number three. Now, this is going to be our last turn, okay? All right. And this time, guys, the way I'm going to fold this, I'm just going to fold it just like a simple book. Ugh, simple book, okay? Half down the middle, and I'm going to overlap the other um, part of the dough over the um, dough cut in half, all right? And that's number four, okay? So what I'm doing right now, before I put this in the refrigerator, I just wanted to roll it out a little bit so when I take it out, I'll have, it'll be easier for me to work with, okay? So I, it'll save me the time. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator, guys. Uh, I would say for at least an hour, about half an hour just to let it rest, okay? Now we're taking it out. All right, and I'm stretching it out. Now, guys, we want this to be at least a quarter. It's all is it like an eighth of an inch thick. At least an eighth of an inch thick. Okay, I would say, hmm. I would say the thickness of a nickel. If my math and my estimations are right. Okay. I was able to get well, I made some more. This is one dough I did. Another dough I made, I made larger croissants. So um, with these, you can make one big croissant the way I'm going to show you how you're going to cut them in those tr that triangle form. Okay, so if you want big croissants, then you wouldn't have to cut it down the middle the way I'm going to do to make smaller croissants. Okay, so we rolled it out, got it pretty even. Try to get it as even as possible, especially when you're folding it, try to get it as even as possible. Um, so I want to make a smaller croissant because I have some bigger croissants as well. Like I said, I was just playing with this recipe here, but it didn't come out as bad. It didn't come out bad at all. It didn't come back at all, bad at all. So I'm just folding it to see where I should cut it down the middle. Okay, I'm using my pizza cutter here. All right, and as you can see, guys, I'm starting at one corner and going diet in a in a uh, um, triangle position. I'm going up, slanted, down, slanted, up, slanted, down, slanted. All right. So now what you're gonna do, guys, once you take your pieces, you're gonna give it a little stretch. 
You're gonna start at the bottom and you're gonna roll nicely. And you're gonna have that little piece at the end, you wanna have that piece down. So the weight of the croissant will be sitting on top of it, okay? And that'll keep it from unraveling. So you stretch and you roll. And that bottom part, let it stay on the bottom so the weight will keep it from unraveling. And what I also did, guys, that you're going to see, I, I was, again, me just playing with stuff. I had some roast beef and some provolone cheese. So I wanted to play with it. And you know how you could play with the croissants and add chocolate? Luckily, I didn't have no chocolate because I wouldn't make some... Uh, um, the chocolate ones. Okay, we stretch, as you can see. And we roll. And that bottom part, it stays on the bottom, so it won't unravel. Okay. So now, guys, as you can see, I said, let me kick out some of this. I had a little bit of uh, uh, roast beef left and a small little piece of provolone cheese. And I took it and I said, let me work this in here. Let me play with this, you know. All right. And I didn't have any more cheese, so I took the rest of the roast beef and I was rolling it up in there in between the croissant. Okay. And I'm going to do the remainder. And after we finish rolling these guys, we're going to put them. I put them like a, you can put them on parch on the tray on parchment paper on a nonstick pan, or if you have silk pads, you could put these on. And we're going to space them apart because we're going to let these rise for at least two to two and a half hours, depending on how warm your house is. So we want to have it in a nice, decent, uh, like a nice warm environment in order for it to start rising. Um, and we're just going to let it double in size. And you'll know when it's ready because when you're looking at the dough, you'll start seeing the actual layers itself. Um, and it'll start to jiggle. Okay? So you want to have some space in between them because not only are they going to double in size during the proofing, but they're going to double in size... They're going to continue to puff and get bigger while they're in the oven, baking as well. All right. So what we're going to do before we put um, cover these to let them proof, I'm going to take one egg yolk and a tablespoon of water, or you could use milk, and we're going to gently brush our um, croissants, okay, um, so we could get a nice... This is going to give us a nice gloss. I do this usually twice before and after. And my loves, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so. And don't forget to press that notification bell so you can be notified weekly of all my new recipes. Don't forget to like. Give me a thumbs up. Share. Let everybody know about Jackie's cooking because, baby, I am here. Okay, and I'm here to stay. All right? All right, so I'm just going in speed mode right now. And we're lightly covering this with um, some plastic wrap. We're not putting it on tightly. We just want to put it lightly on and put it in a draft-free place. Somewhere that's a little warm. Not overly warm, but a little warm so it can start proofing for at least two to two and a half hours. Again, it depends on your oven, I mean, your house too. Okay, so we're going to let these proof in the meantime. And um, we'll be back. All right, my love. So as you can see, these croissants doubled in size. It took about two, for me it was two hours. Okay. For you, it might be a little longer or a little less. Okay, so I'm gently taking off the plastic. And I got my oven preheating at 400 degrees. Okay, I got my oven preheating at 400 degrees. All right, 
And as you can see, you see the layers right there. This is when you can see that they double the sound. You can start seeing the layers of butter in between the um, dough, okay? Note, do not over knead because you don't want to overwork the gluten. Two, you don't want to over laminate because then you're going to make it too thin where the butter is going to get into the actual dough and we don't we don't want brioche we want it to have like a pastry like be a cross between a pastry and like a nice fluffy inside okay and it's gonna come out nice and crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside again this is not the authentic authentic but it i think it comes pretty close but i'll let you all try this recipe and you know at least you'll be like you know what? I want some croissants today. And at least to me, this is almost as good as the original. Authentic way of making it. Where you have the dough and the butter block. Alright, so I'm gently brushing them with an egg wash. Again, gently because they're very delicate. And now we're going to stick them in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes until they're nice and golden brown. And my love, here they are. What? I was, I was like, oh my God, they came out. See, when I have a recipe in my mind or an idea, I got, I, I'm a kind of person, I got to, you know, what's that word? Um, oh God, I forgot the word. I wish my husband was here. But I wanted you to get a nice closer look at the, at the croissants and how they look. Okay, look at that. And it looks like the, you know, like in the dub. Uh, croissants you get from the bakery okay look at that and let me tell you that I was very happy with my idea of how to concoct a, a quicker version of a croissant okay look at those bad boys look at those right there and guys these um, reheat very well they reheat very well you could wrap them individually, but leave them in the on the pan because they'll be a little delicate for about uh, two minutes or so. Then you could take them off because th then they're going to be nice and crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. Okay? Now, this one right here. Mmm. Mmm. Put some of those on the plate for me. I'm gonna take it downstairs. That's right. Mmm. Mmm. You can burn nothing down. Mmm. Why are you talking like that? Mmm. Scary. Mmm. Mmm. I'm so dramatic, guys. But they were that good. They were really good. That was the one with the pastrami. No, not, what was it? No, roast beef. That one was the one with the roast beef. And look look at that. This is another big one I made. You know, so you could play with them and stuff. And when you pull it, look at that. And I was very content. So if you want to make croissants, this recipe right here might be the one for you. If you want to do croissants in under five hours. Okay, and, and guys, leave me your um, messages. Tell me what you think. Okay, I hope you try this recipe. Look at those beautiful layers. Again, it's not the authentic way, but it comes close. And I think you'll like this recipe. Give it a try and play with it. Play with it. Try different ones with cheese, eggs. I don't know. Add some chocolate in there. Some almond paste. Guys, I just want you to eat, love, and pray. Okay, bye.